am so excited to be here, and I am so excited to talk to you about IMUs. I will tell you what they are. But what is the backstory behind this? Like, why am I dressed up this way? So in 2018 Halloween, a few months ago, I was like, I need a Halloween costume. And I'm really excited. And you know what I'm really excited about? Magic, because I am a programmer, and I can do magic. And Harry Potter is also magic. So maybe I can do a programming thing and a magic thing and a Harry Potter thing. So specifically, when I was a kid, there was this game that I really liked, Harry Potter. And you would go around in this game, and you would have a magic wand, and you would wave your wand at things. And you would like do these various gestures. And you could like make things float. You could stun things. You could unlock things. It was awesome. And I was like, I would really like to have this in real life. So I did it, and it was awesome. <laughs> and yeah, I really enjoyed it. And just to give a little bit of context, there were a few logistical constraints behind this project, because I was like, thought about doing this like around early October. I had about two to three weekends, and I was like, I want to spend less than $200 on this. So those were the constraints I was under. Um, so I was like, OK, well, I can work with this. So let me go through like how to build like my gesture recognition one. So when you do a gesture recognition one, you have like three different components. You have your algorithms, which is software, and then you have your computer. Um, running your algorithms, and then you have your sensor, which is also hardware. And so it's these three pieces combined. So first, let's talk about the software aspect of the things, like the algorithms. Cool. So how does kind of your standard gesture recognition algorithm work? Um, so what happens is you get time series data. So the x-axis on this graph is basically time. And you just have a while loop that just runs forever. And it's just like eating this data. And you're like, hmm, like I see this like slice of data. Is there a gesture here? Hmm, is there? No, there isn't. Hmm, is there data here? Nope, no gesture. And you just keep going, and then you get here, and it's really exciting. There's a thing here. And you run your same algorithm, and you're like, yes, there is a gesture here. Trigger the gesture thing, awesome. And then, you know, you, it's a while loop, so you like keep going forever. So that's your really high level algorithm, awesome. We know what our algorithm is going to be. Next, let's talk a little bit about sensors. So there are a lot of different sensors that you can use for a project like this. What I decided to use was an IMU, which stands for Initial Measurement Unit. It's basically an orientation sensor. It has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. And all you really have to know is it tracks like your position. Like This is a rabbit being tracked by an IMU. And um, it can detect like shakiness. It can detect your like direction of north. It can detect how you're like twisting things. It can detect a lot of awesome things. So I'm like, okay, IMUs. This seems awesome. How do I find an IMU? Because I'm doing a hardware project. Fortunately, there's this awesome website, Adafruit, and I went in and I like typed in IMU, and it came up. Here is an IMU you can use. And I'm like, awesome, this is great. There are libraries for it. There are tutorials for how to wire stuff up. I like this. Documentation is great. So now I know what sensor I'm going to use. And finally, what computer am I use, going to use? What am I going to use to like, connect all of this and make it all work? Well, so when you're doing these kinds of like, hardware electronics projects, there are two large categories of computers that you can choose. So on one hand, you can use embedded Linux. So this is your like, Raspberry Pi. And on the other hand, you can use like, microcontrollers, which are kind of Arduino-like systems. And these boards look pretty similar, but they're surprisingly different. And the main difference is your Raspi loves Linux. And I love Linux. And specifically, like, why, why do I love Linux? Well, because on the Raspi, I get my Python. I get my scikit-learn, so my standard machine learning stuff, I get my TensorFlow. Whereas on microcontrollers, um, the support machine for machine learning is a little bit less mature. You're like, hmm, maybe I can use MicroPython. Like, I've seen some hacks for like, getting TensorFlow to run on microcontrollers. But like, I have two to three weeks, and I do not have time to like, figure out how to like, do snake charming or parcel tongue on like, a <laughs> microcontroller. So I'm just going to go with like, a RasPi. Um, unfortunately, like the standard Raspi is like the size of two of my fists, and like this is my wand. It's pretty small, and I'm like, I need a small Raspi. So I like type into Google "small Raspi," <laughs> and like this Raspi comes up, and I'm like, awesome! I have a small Raspi. So cool. Now I know like a rough algorithm. I have my small Raspi, and I have my like IMU that I looked up on Adafruit. Cool. Now that I have these pieces, I need to put them together. So. The first part, like I just follow the tutorial and I connect my IMU to my RasPi because documentation is great and the communication protocol is UART. And I'm like, I need to attach this to a wand somehow. Actually, first I need to like have a wand. And do I make it by hand? 
I actually, I, so I just went to Amazon and I like Googled like costume <laughs> wand and like this came up and I'm like awesome, this seems super easy and I like ordered a wand. So I like took this and I like glued it to a wand and I was like yes, I'm done, except batteries are not included. I'm like, oh, I need a battery. So I like went and I bought a battery and I could like connected it to the Raz Pi. And then I was like, hmm, well when I detect the gesture, like something needs to happen. Like, do I want my like lights to turn on? Do I like want to like build this giant fan thing to like blow all my pillows and like have them float? Um, I have two to three weeks, so I'm just going to play a sound effect. So I ended up buying like a speaker. So this is a speaker and I just connected over USB audio. So great, I finally have my thing. And like how, this, this is like, a software engineer trying to do like mechanical diagrams. <laughs> so this, so I basically, I have this wand, wand, and then um, I have the battery. And one of the most amazing things I realized was after I ordered the battery, I was like, the battery is the si same diameter as the wand. So I just like glued them together, and then I like hold it, and it's great. And then on top of this, I have the Raspberry Pi um, zero, and then I have the IMU. And I'm like, I need to attach this together. You know what's good at like tying things together? Hair ties. So I like <laughs> tied it together with hair ties, and it was great. Um, and then finally, you're like, okay, but like my speaker is huge. Like, what do I do with this? Well, fortunately, like I'm wearing this robe, and like the sleeves are like really big, so I can just like thread it up my sleeve, and the kids won't notice, because all I have to do is impress the kids during Halloween. Cool. So this is, this is a picture of the completed product. You can see like a big picture at the left and on the right, I was actually like, you know what's more awesome than normal hair ties? Clear hair ties. So like, that's why like, you can like see the nice raspberry and everything. Cool, and I was able to kind of have a successful Halloween, which was super fun and I really enjoyed it. And um, you know, in our remaining time, I'd love to talk a little bit more about how to, you can do this yourself, how you can get into hardware prototyping. So for a long time, like I really wanted to do hardware prototyping, but I couldn't get into it. And what I realized is there are certain mind shifts that you have to make in order to jump from software to hardware. So one of the things that I realized is that you need to have a lot more discipline and you need to really kind of work on your planning skills because when you're doing software, you're like, yes, hackathon, download all the things right now. Um, but when you're doing a hardware project, you can't be like, order all the things right now, except you can. Uh, but you're still gonna have to wait for shipping. And that goes into my next point, which is one of the things I didn't realize doing hardware projects is you're gonna be a lot faster if you just order all the things and then accept that you're only going to use half of them. This is kind of like your R&D budget. Like in software, your R&D budget is time. In hardware, your R&D budget is also money. And it's just a lot more fun when there's no pressure to like choose all your parts carefully. So once I made this mind shift, it was a lot easier to kind of go into this. Um, but another thing that also really helps with getting into hardware prototyping is having more reference projects and having more documentation. So in the light of documentation, I actually have all the software um, for this project on my GitHub software documentation. And on the hardware side of things, I, one, one of the things I dislike about hardware projects is people are like, let's talk about like the big pieces of it. And like you'll figure out the cable things by yourself. And I was like, I don't like this. Like, so I made this Amazon wish list that has all the cables I used, all the parts I used, even like the super glue I used. So you can just go to this link. Um, this link is also on the GitHub, so you don't have to copy it down. Um, the GitHub also has a link to the slide deck, but you can just like order all the things and it includes all the cables. Unfortunately, it doesn't include all the tools. So you're gonna to need a soldering iron. It's not on that list but uh, we're just about out of time. And there are so many other things I am excited about that I want to talk to you guys about. So like, please find me afterward or like email or tweet me if you would like to talk about any of these things or other things or like tools or basically all the things. So thank you so much. Um, really enjoy being here and looking forward to an awesome Bang Bang Con West.